What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 30 of the pe- uh, the Operation Premiership at Coventry City. And I've got the last couple of months, I think, to review fixtures wise, and just a couple of transfers to let you know about. Or well, one transfer it might be. I think I told you about Annie Chabie in the last one. Um, so the only one I've got to tell you about is Luis Herrera. He's coming on New Year's Day, uh, £9,000 from Sevilla's B team. He's just got some. Uh, the stats in the key areas for a centre half um, along with a good report and if we can't use him as a first team player I'm no doubt that we'll be able to make a fair bit of money on him so he's a good player physically as well which could do as a world of good plus he's six foot six and he's got 17 jumping that's what I always like from my centre halves <clears throat> so we've gotten to the fixtures now and we've had a decent ish time since we last played Millwall in the live comms. So then we faced Sheffield United away from home and we beat them 4 1. It was a really good result. Um, I've not done well against Sheffield United in recent times, but we played really well. It was fairly even on the stats and we were actually outplayed on possession, but we just we were so clinical and, and each AB and Pedersen up front were just lethal. 18 minutes and 49 for Anichebe's goals. Then Pedersen added 2 in 3 minutes after 58 and 61 to put us 4 0 up. Unfortunately, we couldn't hold on to the clean sheet, and Will Keane did get a consolation after 88. But a 4 1 victory away from home is a fantastic result and really pleasing to see. We then played Colchester at home and drew 1 1. Um, we probably should have won this game. We had more chances, we had more possession. But Unfortunately, a no goal by Miquel gave them the lead after 25. Scott Dunn did equalise for us on 36. But I tried to push for it in the second half and we just couldn't get that elusive second goal um, to win the game. And taking a point against a team that were higher up in the table than us, so it's not too bad. We then faced Nottingham Forest and got a 1-0 win, which actually got um, Sean O'Driscoll the sack from Forest. As you can see, we limited them to very few chances, only one on target. We didn't do too well from our own shots, but we did score one goal through Anichebe after 16 minutes, and it was enough to win us the game, even though they had more possession than us. And a 1-0 victory against Forest, I was really, really pleased with. We then faced Middlesbrough away from home. Middlesbrough were bottom of the league, and it was a great result. 2-1, um, more... Marcus Pedersen after 9 and 23 minutes gave us a 2-0 lead at half time Adam Jackson did he get one back for them after 50 minutes and then John Fleck missed a penalty to make the scoreline a bit healthier after 90 minutes but 2-1 result another 3 points on the board and 4 games unbeaten now and the stats say it was pretty even possession was pretty even as well so we're probably lucky to get a win on the day but pleasing to see nevertheless and that was the end of November, and I think I got a manager. I think I got third in manager of the month for November because I was won four, drew one, and lost one. So a pretty good month. In December hasn't gone as well. We lost two 0 to Brighton on the opening day of December um, away from home. Danny Ward after eleven, and Adam Lafondre after sixty eight. I never do too well against Brighton. I don't know why they're just very very difficult to beat. Um, they created far more chances, had far more possession, and on the day I can't complain about the result. They fully deserved it. We then played Peterborough at home, who they are in the playoffs and doing really, really well. So I couldn't have gone into it saying I was expecting a victory. I would have been happy with a point. And they just did better with their chances on the day. Everything was pretty even, but Tyrone Barnett, six minutes from time, managed to score the winner to give them all three points and to take it away from us. So disappointed with that, but it's not a terrible, terrible loss. But we did bounce back away from home at Swindon, who were just outside the playoffs at the time. Miles Story, after 24 minutes, gave them the lead, but then he was sent off six minutes from before half-time for a straight red. And that gave us a way back into the game. We used it. 58 minutes gone. Christophe Jean scored to make it 1-1. And then with five minutes to go, Scott Dan bundled home a corner 
to make it 2-1 and give us all three points. And on the day, we didn't have the chances that you would that uh, would suggest a team winning compared to Swindon. But the uh, we did all right on the possession and came away with the three points, which is what matters at the end of the day. We then faced Bristol City at home, who were they were down at the bottom, in, well, just outside the relegation zone, but they had been in some amazing form. And I was pleased to get out of this with a 2-2 draw. Bob Demerell after four minutes giving us the lead, before Shane Ferguson on 54 and a penalty on 66 gave Bristol City the lead. Victor Anichebe then got us level with 18 minutes to go, and neither side could find a winner. And on the day, Bristol City probably had the better chances, the more possession, deserved to win probably, but we did well to keep them at bay and get a 2-2 draw out of the game. We then faced Villa at away and Aston Villa at our top of the table and got a very good side. Can't complain with a 2-1 defeat really. They were always going to be a very, very tough team to play against. Thomas Ince after 13 minutes giving them the lead. We did equalise two minutes after the break through David Davis but just a minute later and Rory Donnelly made it 2-1 and this guy has been absolutely on fire for them this season. 18 in 21 league games. It's incredible stats and no doubt Villa will be in the top two probably at the end of the season. We then faced Wigan at home and Wigan again since they came up a couple of years ago have been very 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 good at this level. They've still got Franco De Santo and he still tears me apart every time. 21 and 55 minutes with the two goals this time. Statistically they were far far better than us and I can't complain with the result again they were much much better and deserved it. So that brings us to today's game and we are away against Crystal Palace in the Empire Championship. We've got the FA Cup third round next away at Blackburn. But this is the live con for today, the Crystal Palace game. And it's a fairly important game for both sides. We are on 33 points in 17th place and we're just three points clear of the relegation zone now. Having pulled right away at one point, the defeats in December have dragged us back nearer. So we could do with a win to try and get back up into the mid-table area and away from the relegation zone. Crystal Palace are on 29. They need to win to sort of get back in the mix with all these lot. It is looking a bit ominous for Middlesbrough at the moment who are on 18 points and 12 points drift of safety. They are getting cut adrift and I do think it's already relegation for them this season. So we get straight on to today's game. I've already picked the side. And our team is McCarthy in goal, straight 4 4 2. Christie, Dan, Miquel, and Davis at the back. Mayher, Fleck, Jean, and Torrey in midfield, with the Nietzsche beat and Scannell up front. Pedersen is injured at the moment, and I've got quite a few fitness worries after a couple, few games in a couple of days, so I've had to rotate the team quite a lot. The only t- players starting for the last game really is a Nietzsche beat. Um, Miquel, Dan, Christian, McCarthy. The whole midfield's changed. So, we'll see how that, how that gets on. For them, it's Fon Williams in goal. Cummings, Blake, Chambers and Parr at the back. Uh, a V midfield made up of Britton, Jedinak, Prashaska, Adama and Rose. And Nimley is up front. So... Go like that, yeah. And passionate for the fans. Nothing. I have faith. I have faith. That team talk could have gone better, but it's not too bad, I suppose. No reds. So we kicked off for the first half. I just got to change that to 2D Classic. And it is a pointless highlight to get us underway at the start of the first half. I forgot also to put it on to extended. Well done, Johnny. It's a good start. And here's Mayha. And just kept hold of it. Davis Fleck. And each of these shoots and it's wide. And Christoph Sean's picked up a a knock for us which isn't the best but we'll try and 
uh, let him carry on as Nimli has it into Jedinak and into Adoma Adoma from the right hand side cross it Nimli scrambled around Jedinak Nimli shoots into the and it's turned around apparently McCarthy turned it around oh it's offside I think Nimli was flagged for offside throwing taken straight to Rose Nimli now shoots and hits the post and it's cleared away and that's I, you always know when you've got a, when you've got a throwing in that corner and it's a highlight you know you're going to give it away to the opposition it's just ridiculous is there throwing Cummings Britain Cummings again Blake and Cummings down the line to Adoma Prashaska Adoma to Jedinak passing it around nicely Jedinak to Cummings and Jedinak again and it's a good save by McCarthy and it's scrambled away by the defence before Jedinak fouled in each of it free kick here's a Meha and he's tackled by Nimli straight away what the hell is going on there Prashaska forward Mikwell gets it though Torre through to Scannell Scannell's in on goal and he's put it wide as he missed that Sean Scannell against his former club had the chance to put us in front there and doesn't take it and now they've got a, f a chance here Britain shoots and it's harmlessly wide two minutes of injury time Britain forward for the free kick headed by Cummings and McCarthy saves it good save by Alex McCarthy par into the box and nimbly flicks it at goal McCarthy saves again another corner Cummings in this time it's cleared out for a throw in by Fleck and it is 0-0 at half time and Palace have been far the better We've been poor so far and we're going to have to play a lot better in the second half. And they're unhappy with the team talk. I thought it was deserving. We're playing a team in the relegation zone. We haven't had a shot on target and they're all over us. I don't see why the, the team are getting unhappy at me being or, um, annoyed with the first half. As Torre is injured now, and that's the last thing we need at this stage. Um, da, 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 da. Who can I bring on? Do you know what? It's going to have to be Wubshet. I'm going to have to change him with Scannell. And Scannell can't play there, but he's a left winger, so he can play there. He will play there. And you better play that. So not the ideal start to the second half. So that terrible half time team talk. A couple of minutes in and we've lost our winger. As Christy throws it straight to par. What was that? Nimley. Tackled and we've got it back. Scan on now. Down the left hand side. Jinkin pass players. Fleck. Dan. Out wide to Christy. Now Mayha. Christy again. Fleck. Christy. Fleck, edge of the box, Jean shoots, it's blocked, we've got it back again, Mayha into the box, tackle by Chambers, and he clears it away, and their player, Jednax, picks up a knock now, as Mayha almost scores, don't think he meant it, Fleck into the box, it's flicked on, it's gone behind for a corner, Fleck again, into the box, and Scott Dan almost gets there, but it's cleared away, and it's another throw in, Christie will take it short to Nietzscheby into Mayha Fleck Davis Mayha and he's giving it away Fleck gets it back though but Mayha made the foul on par and an hour gone still no nil here it's Fleck tackle by Jedinak Dan has it all the way back to McCarthy Mikwell McCarthy and Scott Dan and Mikwell now and he's tackled by Nimley Adoma shoots it's saved and Balassi scores and what the fucking hell was the defence doing there? It does my head in when they play about like that because you just know they're going to give the ball away. And they've scored. It's fucking shocking, that is. Mayha has it. Jean. And we've lost it again. Davis forward. Wubshet brings it down. Shoots. Saved by Fon Williams. And it's out for a throw in. 
just over a quarter of an hour to go now. We only had one shot on target in the entire match. That is just abysmal. I'm really not happy with the way this game's gone. <coughs> um, let's push you to up now. <coughs> if you're not happy playing there, you can play there. Need to start pushing now. Try and get a, an equaliser. It's been really poor today. Really, really poor. Created nothing. Quarter of an hour left. And nothing's happening. But now there's a Oh, he's Sloan. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed a sitter. Alex Sloan with the chance to equalise for us and he's missed it. Fon Williams for Mikwell. It's clear. Davis now. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. Scannell. Hetherington. Oh, and we've lost it. Stupid passing. Lost it. Fleck trying to win it back. Williams. Nimley. Britton. Adoma nimbly shoots his wide. Just every time we seem to get a chance, we seem to find some way to fuck it all up. Martin forward. It's gone all the way up for a goal kick. McCarthy forward. Sloan heads it down to Mayha. Mayha runs and shoots with it, and that's gone. 10 miles wide, ridiculous. Why the hell is he shooting from there? Jedding out with the free kick. It's blocked. Cummings now into the box. Christie heads it straight to Martin Adoma. <coughs> free kick. A minute to go. McCarthy forward. Nimley. Attack by Dan. Hetherington. Davis. Scannell. Scannell tries to go past Cummings. He's tackled. Blake. Forward. Miquel. Hetherington for Scannell he's tackled it's a throw in Davis to Scannell Davis Hetherington forward straight to Cummins and it's all over and it was a shocking shocking performance by the boys and you know what I don't care if they do get unhappy with that I'm going to tell them how it was it was just a, such a poor performance against the poor side Bristol Palace had nothing special that's why they're down in the relegation zone. And that defeats left us just a point clear of Palace in the relegation zone now. <clears throat> and it just shows how quickly you can get dragged back into it. Because at one point we looked well clear. And we were looking towards the playoffs. And then we hit December. We got some really tough, difficult games. Lost them. And suddenly we slipped back down. And now we're on the verge of the relegation zone again. So, as you've just seen there, we are down in 20th now. And we've got to pick up. We have to. We've got to start picking points up against these bottom teams. And that was a shocking, shocking performance. And hopefully we can put an end to that sort of a performance and get get back to winning ways. Hopefully we can get a bit of a morale boosting win against Blackburn, as long as we don't get hammered. They are doing really, really well in the Premiership, by the way. They are up in oh they're eighth now they were fourth last time I checked when I got drawn against them they've obviously had a bit of bad fun uh, form themselves but um, the next time you see me I will be doing the I'll be live coming the Wolves game I'm going to play January and February together because it's a short month January so I'll play those two months together and then I'll live com the Wolves home game. So guys, if you enjoyed the episode, please do give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to leave me any comments, ask me any questions, do feel free to do so in the comments section. And I'll see you again soon guys. Have a good day. Bye.